Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at two topics, qualified dividend income and the alternative tax on net capital gain and quali qualified dividend income. Now, we in the past, we did look at qualified dividend income, so we're going to review it very, very briefly. In this session, you have to know certain things. You have to know how to compute the capital gain tax using 0, 15, and 20%. If you don't know how to do this, go back to chapter 13 or to chapter 3. So this is a prerequisite for this course. And also, if you go back to chapter 3, it will show you how to compute taxes in general, which some, which is a skill we need for this session. So this session definitely, definitely needs some prerequisites. So I'm just telling you, go back to chapter 3 and chapter 13 to learn how to figure out 0, 15, 20% and how to compute your taxes. So this session is relevant for an income tax course, someone studying for the CPA exam regulation section and the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on a professional level. So if you have a LinkedIn, please connect with me. If, you, if you're a Facebook user, please like my Facebook page and you can connect with me on a personal level. You want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. This is where I house all my lectures. So this way you are up to date for any additional lectures that I post. I have a Twitter account and on my website. You can find my courses and organize by chapter and you can get, get in touch with me as well. If you like this recording, there's a good chance you are either an accounting student or a CPA candidate. This is good news for you. Why? Because this recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. On Jaeger, you can find hundreds of hours of similar video lectures, thousands of multiple choice questions with detailed solution, simulation, you can purchase a textbook. And what's neat about Jaeger CPA, it follows the blueprint integration of the AI CPA. You have audio lectures, electronic, electronic flashcards, plus many other resources. If you happen to choose Jaeger, use PMF code and you will get 15% off of the best valued course. You will benefit yourself and benefit this channel. So let's talk first about qualified dividend. Now, what is qualified dividend? It's something that we discuss in, in detail in chapter four, but we need to review it very briefly. It's dividend paid by domestic corporation and certain foreign corporation. If you need more explanation, go to chapter four. But we need to, to we need to know that we have something called qualified dividend. Now, why do we need to know this? Why why is this relevant for us in this session? It's because qualified dividend income is taxed like long term capital gain at zero, fifteen, and twenty percent, depending on your tax bracket and your income level. And this is why you need to go back to chapter three if you don't know what how zero, fifteen, and twenty percent are used. Now. But you have to remember, qualified dividend income are not included. Notice I put it in red, so this way you, you pay attention. Are not included in the capital gain loss netting process that we conducted prior to the session. So prior to the session, we looked at the netting process. We netted it capital gain and capital losses. The qualified dividend income, they don't go into that netting process. Yes, they are taxed like long-term capital gain, but when we when we do the netting, and if you remember, we had we netted something like this. Hopefully you remember this. We said we have long-term capital gain, long-term capital loss, and we net them. Then we have two, two of those. We have the 25% and the 28%, if you remember those. Then we have short-term capital gain, short-term capital loss. Okay, then we net those, then we went through the netting process. So qualified dividend income don't go into this netting process. So this is what we are saying. So make sure you don't, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't go through this. Okay. Now, if the dividend is unqualified dividend, if they told you in a CPA exam or on the test, it says unqualified dividend, unqualified dividend is taxed, is treated as ordinary income. And what, what's also treated as ordinary income, hopefully you remember short term capital gain short term capital gain is treated as ordinary income so if it's unqualified dividend if the problem says this is unqualified dividend easy add it to your ordinary income okay now why is this important again why is this important why are we talking about this here because in taxation we have to know how to tax the income because different income is taxed differently ordinary income is taxed different than long-term capital gain and remember within long-term capital gain we could have 28 and 25 percent so we want to make sure how we how we how we tax our income so income taxation order is very important so let's take a look at our income tax taxation order so this is important 
the ordering is important okay so here's how we do how we tax our income first we tax our ordinary income i'm going to be read abbreviating ordinary income as oi and net short-term capital gain notice it's the net short-term capital gain okay then we tax our long-term capital gain the 25 percent then we tax our long-term capital gain 28 percent then the last layer is the 0 15 and 20 percent layer okay and there's no way to explain this and show you how this work unless we work an example so there's no other way okay so of course we're going to be working an example to show you how this work but uh, copy this information down the, those are the layers ordinary income first long-term capital gain 25 percent long-term capital gain 28 percent uh, the 28 percent then the 0 15 and 20 percent now in your textbook it may it might look something like this it's really intimidating but it's really it's the same thing that's here i summarized it now in the textbook they explain again what's zero percent what's tax at zero percent what's tax at 15 what's tax at 20 and this is what i cover in chapter three just in case you are wondering you know what is this all this information that's why if you don't understand how zero 15 and 20 percent work go back and view them because you don't want to learn all of this together now so notice ordinary income goes first ordinary income then tw 25 then 28 okay but this is basically a summary again let's look at examples that's the no way around it okay so joanne a single taxpayer has taxable income of 118,000, including 10,000 in net capital gain and 120,000 in qualified dividend income so what does that mean so joanne she has total income of 118 of which 10,000 is net capital gain and 2,000 is qualified dividend income. So if I ask you, what is her ordinary income? Well, obviously her ordinary income is take 118 minus the 12 because the other the others are, this the 10,000 is net capital gain. They don't tell us if it's short term or long term, it doesn't matter, but okay. So 106 is what we considered her ordinary income income so just want to know that so it's so the the 10 and the 12 might be treated differently and the 106 is ordinary income okay so this is basically a simple example just to kind of illustrate that the 118 so not not all of her income is treated the same okay the 118 ordinary income which is based on ordinary tax rate the 10 and the the 10 and the 12 they're going to be treated differently based on the alternative uh, tax, uh, alternative tax treatment. Let's take a look now at a little bit more information. Okay, let's dive into the numbers. And here I'm going to be flipping back and forth between the information, the tax schedule, so on and so forth. Okay, so assume that Joanne's 10,000 net capital gain is made up of 7,000, 25 percent, and 3,000, 0, 15, and 20 percent gain. So let's, you know what, let's do this. Let's, uh, let me see if I can capture this. It's better off working with this on another uh, another slide. Give me one second. So let me capture this and work with it. This way I need to mark this up. All right. So, so remember we said, uh, what we said, we said Joanne's total income is 118, okay, of which 10,000, is now they're telling us how the 10,000 is broken uh, 10,000 is capital gain 7,000 is 25 percent so of that 10,000 7,000 is 25 percent and 3,000 is subject to 0 15 and 20 percent then of this we have remember let me, let me put this in a different color and we also have it shouldn't, re, it shouldn't be really in a different color. 2,000 of qualified dividend income. Okay? So, remember what I said earlier. I said if that's the case, if 118 is her total income, then we have to deduct those two to find out her ordinary income. Okay. So, her, her ordinary income, if we take 118, if we take 118, if we take 118 minus 12, her ordinary income is 106. So the first thing we do is we're going to tax her ordinary income. So how much do we pay taxes? So this is the kind of look at it as the first layer. Remember, first thing we tax ordinary income. So how much is taxes on 106? Well, we have to go to the tax schedule. Okay, so let's go back to the PowerPoint slides. And there we go. 
So we are dealing with a single individual. So let's cross these out. So we are dealing with a single individual. Their taxable income is 106. So the taxable income 106 is some someplace in between here. So between 82, 82, 82,500 and 157,500, this is where the 106 falls. So that so see, so Joanne is in the 25% tax bracket. This is important. So her taxes is $14,089.50. Let me copy this number down. Let me write it down somewhere. So her taxes is $14,089.50 plus 24% of the amount above 82,500. So let's go back and do the computation here to figure out what's the taxes on the 106. So first we're gonna take the 106 and find the taxes on it. We said on the 106, the taxes are $14,089.50 plus 24, 24, not 25, 24% 24 of the amount in excess of 82,500. So let's find out the amount of act in excess of 82,500. So 106, 106 minus 82,500. That amount is 23,500. So we're gonna multiply this one by 23,500. Okay, so 24, th this amount times 0.24, that's 5,640. So the taxes on the 106 is this number plus this number, which is, let me just add them up. So it's very important you know how to compute your taxes. Uh, plus $14,089.50, that's equal to 19729 well, round it up, 19730 So notice on the first 106, the taxes is 19730 So we are done with this 106. So here's what we're doing now. So the first 106000 which is considered ordinary income, the taxes on this amount is 19730 And I showed you how we computed this. Now, remember, her total is 118, so we are done. From the 118, we dealt with 106. What we are left is with the with this 10,000. And remember this 10,000, 7,000 of it is 25%. Now, remember, 7,000 of it is subject to a 25% capital gain. Now, how did I know it's 25%? They told you in the problem, it's 25% gain. Now, don't worry about why 25%. But just know it's, we'll talk about this later, why 25%. So now what we have to do, the next 7,000, it's taxed at either at either 25% or or the ordinary the ordinary rate of the taxpayer 24% the lower of these two obviously 24% is lower therefore what we're going to do we're going to take 7000 times 24% and that's going to give us taxes of 1680 now you're saying why did we use uh, uh 20 24 and not 25% because there is an alternative tax treatment. It's either 25% or if your ordinary rate is lower, you would use your ordinary rate. And this Joanne, this individual, this taxpayer is in the 24% tax bracket. How did I know in the 24% tax bracket? Look, I'll show you how, just in case you are wondering. Notice, up to 157,500, she's gonna be in the 25%. So if we add that additional 7,000 to her income, she's still in, within the 24% tax bracket. So that's why, I said, Joanne is in the 24%. Now, so we're done with the 7,000. Remember, we have 3,000 is long-term capital gain. You know, 3,000 is 0, 15, and 20%. Now, based on the 0, 15, and 20%, it's either it's she's going to be taxed at 24% or not 0 and not 20% or 15%. Okay, why? Because she falls in the 15%. If you don't know how to do this, yeah, that's why you need to go back to chapter three. So now the 3,000, we're gonna multiply it by 15%. So 3,000 times 15%, she's gonna pay $450 on that amount. Well, then she got an additional 2,000 in qualified dividend income. So we took care of the 7,000, we took care of the 3,000. Now the last thing, we're gonna take care of the 2,000 qualified dividend income. Remember, qualified dividend income is treated as long-term capital gain. And if we add 2,000 to our income, we're gonna still gonna be in the 24%. So it's either gonna be 24% or 15%. 15% is lower, therefore we're gonna take the 2,000 times 15% and that's gonna give us $300 in taxes. Now we add up all the taxes and 
The alternative tax liability is 22,160. Now, if we did not use the alternative tax liability, if we took the 118,000 and we use the tax table, basically we did not separate the, uh, the capital gain and the qualified dividend income, then we would have to pay more, okay? So her, her tax liability on the 118 is 22,160. As a result, she saves $450. Why? Because if you use 118, if you take 118,000 and you go to the tables and you would use 118 and you just say, okay, 118, if you take 14,000, $89.50 plus the amount plus 24,000 above the amount 82,500 her tax liability would have been uh, 22,610 it would have been 450 higher okay 450 higher okay so this is one example again we're gonna work several version of this example Let's now change the example a little bit. Assume that Joanne is a single taxpayer. Her taxable income is 25000 of which 11000 is capital gain and 1000 is ordinary a qualified dividend income, and 13000 is other taxable income. Okay, so her taxable income in, in total 25000 That's the total, of which 13 is ordinary income, 11000 is capital gain and 1000 is qualified dividend income so how do we how do we go through this first we tax the ordinary income the ordinary income uh, then they said the 11000 net capital gain is is this net capital gain this amount here 11000 is made up of 8300 8, which is 25% right here and 2700 the 015 and 20%, all right, which is the 1,000, also 0, 15, and 20%. So the first thing is we're going to figure out the taxes on the 13,000. Uh, that's easy. Uh, well, we have to do some computation here. So she falls in the 12% tax bracket as of, the, as of right now, and it's 952.50 plus 12% uh, of the amount above 95.25, and this should give you 1,370. So on the 13,000, Joanne is responsible for 1,370. Now, the next thing is the 11,000, of which we said 8,300 is subject to the 25% capital gain, but she's in the since she's in the 12% tax bracket, why? Because look, up to 38,700, she's going to be in the 12%, 12 and she's below that amount, so she's good. Not she's good, she's in the 12% tax bracket. Therefore, we'll take 8,300 times 12%. Therefore, on the 8,300, she's going to pay 996. Now, what's left of the 11,000 is the 2,700. The 2,700 is this. As long as you are below 38,600, as long as your taxable, as long as your taxable income is below 38,700, 38, and you are single, you're going to pay zero. You're going to pay no capital gain tax. And guess what? On the 2,700, since Joanne's income is below 38,600. All her income is 25,000, so she's way below 38,700. No taxes on this 2,700. And the 1,000 is treated like the 2,700, which is 0, 15, and 20%. That's also zero. Therefore, her alternative tax liability is 2,366. If you are wondering why no taxes on the 2,700, it's because anything below 38,600, just know this. If you don't know this, go back to chapter three. If somebody is single and if their taxable income is below 38,600, the capital gain, if they have any long-term capital gain, is taxed. it's not taxed, it's zero. It's, it's, uh, it's not subject to any taxation, okay? So as long as they are with below 38,600. And same thing for qualified dividend, okay? Again, if she computed her tax the regular way, on the 25,000, included everything as ordinary income, she would have paid 2,810, which is $444. And you can take the 25,000 and work the example. Now, make, now remember, I'm, I'm using 2018 tax rate schedule. If you are using 2019, 2020, 2021, hopefully 2022, this, these lectures will be relevant up until 2022. Use, use the, use the uh, tax rate that applies for that period, but the concept should be the same. Okay, let's add some complexity to this. 
Okay? Assume the same fact as in example 42, except that Joanne's taxable income is 40,000. Now we change the taxable income again. Now the taxable income is 40,000, of which 11,000 net capital gain. Da, 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 da. Okay, so let's break down the capital gain. Uh, 11,000 is capital gain. Okay, so of this amount, 11,000, of this amount, 11,000 is capital gain and um, 1,000 is qualified dividend income, okay? And this is an interesting example, so I make sure you follow with me here, okay? Um, 1,000, okay. Now remember, the, uh, the 11,000, let's go back to the prior example because we need to break down the 11,000 again. Uh, 11,000, oh, of this 11,000, remember, of this 11,000, 8,300 is the 25% bracket, and what's left is 2,700, that's 0, 15, and 20%, okay? And remember, the qualified dividend income is treated as 0, 15, and 20%. So let's go back and through the computation again. First, we have 40,000 in total income. We have to deduct from it 12,000, which is not ordinary income. What's left is 28,000. So we're going to take the 28,000, go to the tax tables, 28,000. Let's go to the tax tables. And 28,000 falls here, this individual right now in the 12% tax bracket. It's 952.50 plus 12% of the amount in excess of 95.20. So if we do the computation, the taxes on the 28,000 on the ordinary income is 3,170. That's good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to tax the 8,000, remember, the next thing is the 25%, the next layer, 25%. Therefore, we're going to take uh, 8,300, and we're going to choose between either 25 or 12%. Now, why 12%? Because look at it. This individual, this individual, uh, the first 28,000. So this individual, 28,000 plus 8,300, if we take 28,000 plus 8,000, plus 8,300, let me go back here. So 28,000 plus 8,300, that's gonna give us 36,300, 36,300. And 36,300, you are still within the 12% tax bracket. So that's why we have to choose between 12% and 25%, we use 12%. Therefore, we took care of the 8,300, okay? So it's taxed at 12%. And 996 is the taxes on the 8,300. Now, what's left? What's left is this. What's left is the 2,700 and the 1,000. And they're basically, they're treated the same. So what's left is 3,700 that we have to tax. How are we going to tax the remainder of 3,700? Okay, now here we have to be careful. Well, what do we have to know? We have to know that once we exceed... 38,600, as long as we don't exceed this number. Once we exceed 30, 38,600, then long-term capital gain becomes taxable. Okay, so notice, now we are, up to this point, we are at 36,300. Once we exceed 38,600, it's not 38,700, okay? The number is 38,600, so there's a $100 difference, okay? Okay, once we exceed this number, then we start to tax our capital gain at 15%. As long as we don't exceed it, it's at 0%. Well, guess what? Let me do this. So if I take 38,600 minus 36,300, so let's see, let's see, see what amount that's going to be taxed at zero. So let's see, 38,600 minus 3,600, oops, 38,600, minus 38,300, that's 2,300. 2,300, that's still going to be taxed, capital gain, that's going to be taxed at zero or not taxed, okay? Now, why did I choose 38,600 and not 38,700? It's because for capital gain, it's 38,600, okay? You just have to know this. Now, so now what we're going to do, we're going to come back here and show you that 2,300, you don't pay any taxes on it. You don't pay any taxes on it. Okay, why? Because as long as you are below 38,600, you don't pay any taxes on long-term capital gain. 
Now remember, um, okay, so 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 this is gonna bring you up to third. So this brought us when we added the two thousand three hundred, we are up to thirty eight thousand six hundred. Now from thirty eight thousand six hundred to thirty eight thousand thirty eight thousand six hundred to thirty eight thousand seven hundred we are still we are still if you notice here let me highlight it in yellow so the next one hundred dollars the next one hundred dollars because because we are still below thirty eight thousand seven hundred so the next one hundred dollars will be taxed at either the next one hundred dollars will be taxed at either twelve percent or fifteen percent whichever is um, yes, 12, the next, yeah, um, the next, let me go back down, the next, uh, da, 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 the next $100, $100 will be either taxed at 15 or 12%, because we exceeded, why 15? Because we exceeded 38,600, but as far as the tax bracket are concerned, we are still within the 12% tax bracket for the next $100. Therefore, we have to choose either 12 or 15 obviously 12 the lower the now here our ordinary rate is lower than the alternative tax treatment so therefore the $100 times 12% will give us taxes of $12 on this $100 now what's left so notice we started with 2700 we said what that's what's left in I'm sorry we we said we have 3700 of long term capital gain the first what we said we said uh, 2300 of it you don't pay any taxes zero taxes, $100 of it you'll pay 12%, and what's left is 1300 Now this 1300 once we add that income, it's going to put the taxpayer in the which tax bracket. Once you add to the 38700 the taxpayer will be in this tax bracket. This tax bracket is 22%, but you have to choose between 22 and 15 Therefore, you have to choose between um, 22 which is this 1,300 makes the taxpayer falls in the 22% tax bracket. But the taxpayer will have to choose between 15 and 22 because in this bracket, it's either 15 or 22. Therefore, the next 1,300 is taxed at 15%. Now, why is this problem not challenging? Why is it complicated? Because you are you moved into three tax brackets. Basically, yes, I would say three. First, your ordinary income. First, your ordinary income which you, it was taxed at 12%. The 25% capital gain was also taxed at 12% because you are still within 12%. Then what happened, that additional income of capital capital gain in qualified dividend, one, um, uh, 2,300 of it, you were in the 12%, which is gave you 0% zero per, zero for capital gain. $100 of it was in the 12%. It, you pay $12 on it. And 1,300 was taxed in the 22%, which is you can get 15%. You'll be taxed at 15%. So it's just because of the levels of income, and that's why the ordering is important. Okay, that's why the ordering is important. So go back. I'm going to erase everything here. Just go back and uh, review this. Now, remember, just I want to make you aware that the 38,600, this is because students always fall for this. It's because... That additional one hundred dollars falls below the thirty-eight thousand six hundred because it crosses to the other. It crosses to the other side, which is the fifteen percent at thirty-eight thousand six hundred. So know why the thirty-eight thousand six hundred. This is given. Given. Okay. Hopefully you can manage this. Otherwise, email me and reference the minute so I can explain it to you. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look at this example. Jane and Blair are married uh, taxpayer filing jointly and have 2018 taxable income of 107. The taxable income include 5,000 of gain from a capital asset held for five years. So they have long-term capital gain of 5,000. 2,100 of gain from a capital asset held for seven months. I'm going to put this here. 2,100, oh, let's name it, short-term capital gain of 2100 and 13000 of gain from a capital asset held for 14 years long term for 4 years capital gain 13000 all the capital asset were stocks and publicly traded corporation jane and blair also have qualified dividend income of 3000 
qualified dividend income of 3000 what is the couple's tax on the taxable income and related tax savings from the alternative tax computation? Simply put, what's their taxes if we use the alternative tax computation? Now, the first thing you might be asking, why did I separate short-term capital gain from all the others? Well, the reason is because short-term capital gain is considered ordinary income. So first, I need to know what is my ordinary income? Well, if I have 107 in total, 107 of income, then I have to deduct from it those items which are subject to tax preference and that's 8 plus 13 is 21 so I have to deduct from that 21,000 what's going to keep me with is 86,000 so my ordinary income is 86,000 now the first thing I have to do is I have to compute my taxes on this ordinary income I have to compute my taxes then I have to compute my taxes on those on those items so let's first compute my taxes on the ordinary income so we are dealing with married filing jointly Oops, married filing. Let's see, where's married filing jointly? Oh, married filing jointly right here. So we are we are working with this schedule. And the taxable income is 86,000. So let's go back up here. And 86,000 falls in this bracket from 77,400 to 165. So the taxes are 8,907. Let me copy this number down. 8,907 plus, they're in the 22% tax bracket, plus 22% of the amount above 77,400, 77,400. So let me go back and compute the taxes for this first. So the taxes are 8,907 plus the difference between 86,000 and 77,400, the axis of this amount times 22%. They're still in the 22% 20, tax bracket. Okay, so let's do this computation here and find out what's the taxes on the ordinary income, which include the short-term capital gain. So 80, 86,000 minus 77,400, that's 8,600 times 22%, that's 1,892 plus 8,907. So the taxes are 10,799. 10,700. 10, so the taxes are 10,000. 799 and this is on the ordinary income which included the short-term capital gain now the next thing we want to do is figure out and this is easy because they're all long-term capital gain so those are all long-term capital gain figure out the taxes on the long-term capital gain um, now you might be saying are you going to treat them all the same and i say yes we can because remember uh Long-term capital gain, the yeah, and qualified dividend. They're also we could also uh, we could also uh, we could also use long-term capital gain. Yes, so twenty-one thousand. So basically, what's left? We can we can combine those all twenty-one thousand. We can combine them. Why? Because they are all considered long-term capital gain for tax purposes. Now, this is what's those are subject to zero, fifteen. And 20 percent well they're 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 not they don't qualify for zero percent because zero percent it's going to be your i don't know the number but the number is it's going to be in the thirty thousand. i don't know but it's their income is already at 86 therefore they don't they're not subject to the zero and to be taxed at 20 percent, it's going to be high like in the four hundred thousand or five hundred thousand, which is they're not so what's left is 15 percent. so the twenty one thousand is subject to 15 percent. if you want to know exactly how we come up with 15 percent, like what's the cutoff please see chapter three okay and if you take twenty one thousand times 15 percent, that's going to give you three thousand one hundred and fifty and basically you add those two numbers up and let's see how much you will get 10,799 plus 3,150, 13,949, 13,000, okay, I thought I deleted it, okay, 13,000, we said 13,949, if you add those two, okay, so what we did once again, we looked at the ordinary income, which was which was uh, we computed it to be eighty six thousand ordinary income was eighty six thousand and the taxes was ten thousand seven ninety nine and the remainder the twenty one thousand they were all treated the same and we didn't have to skip any tax bracket because we are in the twenty two percent tax bracket we did not really 
Oh, actually, actually, you know what? We did go over in that, another tax bracket, but it doesn't really matter. So notice, uh, no, we did not. We're like, you know, we're up to 165. Even if we did go over, if even if we went from the 22 to 24, it would still be 15%, okay? But I don't know. Once we get to 32, it might change. I don't know what the cutoff is. Maybe not. Maybe it, we don't. the cutoff doesn't start until we're in this tax bracket. But know that, to be subject to the twenty percent, you have to be in the. You have to have a lot of income, and I don't believe three fifteen will get you there or four hundred thousand. Has to be more than four hundred thousand. But again, I don't have the numbers memorized. So that's why the remainder, which is the twenty one thousand, those were subject to fifteen percent, which was three thousand one hundred and fifty. Together, they gave us a total taxes of three thousand nine forty nine. Now, if you want to, you could do an alternative computation, and you can take the one hundred and seven thousand and treat it all as ordinary income, go to the tax table, and treat it all as ordinary income. So you can say, okay, I'm gonna treat all of this as ordinary income, which is, you know, 8,907 plus 22% above the amount of 77,400. I could assure you your tax will be higher than 13,949, okay? Again, there's a lot of computation in this chapter, but, but knowing the order, the order of taxation, how to compute the taxes using the tables, 0, 15, and 20%. Remember, I assume here that you know how to, where 0, 15, and 20, how, how do we come up with those capital gains? Please see the other lecture because I didn't want to add this complication to this, okay? If you have any questions, please email me. If you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. Good luck. Study hard.